Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and guys, I am struggling today. Let me just tell you, I sat down to film, it is so hot in here, like, it is currently, not only is it winter, okay, let me just break it down on a basics here, it is winter. I should not be sweating, and yet here I sit actually perspiring. I'm wearing a t-shirt, I had the window open for the last 40 minutes trying to cool this room off. I don't know why it is so hot in Michigan right now, it's like 40 degrees or so, and I am perspiring at a rapid rate. Now moving into today's video, I'm actually really excited. These are some of my favorites to film, um, and it's just a video of makeup I never played with, where I go through my bins of unused makeup, and I pick out stuff that for whatever reason I purchased it, maybe it was on sale, um, maybe it was on clearance, sometimes it was sent to me in like a boxy charm or a FabFitFun, something like that, and I like to take those products and I divide them in between two bins. I have a drugstore and a high-end side, and every once in a while I go through and I pull out all these products that they're still out in circulation for the most part, I think. I hope. But I pull them out and I like to compile a full face or an almost full face of makeup that I either bought and like haven't tried, haven't revisited, or for whatever reason I just haven't had a little pause on in a hot minute. And I feel like these are great videos because honestly it's a good way to play around with makeup that A, a lot of people already have in their collection, or B, makeup that will come on sale, makeup that is already readily available. It's not the newest hot trend, it's something that already exists and it's just a cool way to kind of sit down and play with stuff that's already had its day in the sun but it's still could be a really good like gem to kind of you know wiggle out and find in the rough. Obviously the first step is going to be primer and I didn't have a new primer but I did have one that I hadn't used in a really long time that I thought it would be cool to throw in here and that is this little guy from NYX. This is the NYX Hydro Touch Primer and it's actually a decent primer. I remember <laughs> primer primer primer. Um, I remember when this first came out maybe six months or so maybe eight months ago ish. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. It has like a blue hint hue to it but when you apply it to your face like it does give almost a light hydration mixed with a very, very light silicone, dimethicone kind of base. So you get a slight amount of slip on your skin and a little bit of that pore feeling. It does give you just this really nice light drink of water and I just really enjoy the way that it sits. All right, so now after that one, this is gonna be a little bit fun. So for those of you that have been here since the very beginning, and I'm talking like maybe under 2,000-ish subscribers, this foundation used to be one of my all-time favorites, okay? Okay. and I thought it was being discontinued a long time ago, so I purchased this one in my hand, and I never used it. I never opened it. I was like, oh, I don't want to waste it. You know, I want to really wait, hold on to it, and see what I think, and that is none other than the e.l.f. Acne Fighting Foundation, so I have tested this before, but this is a brand new bottle. Obviously, it is not um, opened or anything like that. And here she is. It's just like a standard plastic little component. I feel like this foundation is in, like, maybe the five or six dollar range. The shade range for it is absolutely horrible. It reminds me a lot of of a slightly cheaper version of the Catrice HD Full Coverage Foundation that I absolutely love and swear by. Um, this one is technically supposed to be an acne fighting option for foundation because it does have 0.5% salicylic acid, which is designed to fight acne. So I just thought it would be really cool to sit down, revisit this one today, and I don't know, just like give it a go and have some fun because this used to be one of my ride or die all time favorite foundation. And as you can see, I'm not kidding about the shade range, guys. This is the lightest shade in the shade shade porcelain porcelain <laughs> like I think not um but the overall like consistency the way that it spreads on the skin I think it looks so so beautiful and just as a side note here I was looking at the bottom and it actually has which is very handy a little expiration date it says expires 9 2 of 21 so it is not expired thank you lord up above because I did not want to put expired foundation on my face now for concealer this one is something I haven't played with in a very long time so I wanted to include it in this video this is the flower beauty light illusion concealer I grabbed it in the shade L1-2 Fair, which I believe is, of course, their lightest shade. Now, I'm just giving you guys a little comparison swatch of what I'm used to. So I did swatch them out of my hand. This is the foundation I just went in with. This is the Light Illusion. This is the lightest shade from Flower Beauty. And then this right here is the CoverGirl concealer in the shade L100 Fair Porcelain. And like, look at the difference. Like this, when I think of Fair, we're a lot closer here than we are with this. And I don't even know what the hell this is. Like, girl, no. So the shade range, as far as the e.l.f. foundation and this concealer, they're not very good, um, but I still wanted to give it a try just to see if maybe, since my skin has changed, maybe my thought on like this concealer would change. I don't know. Um, I know a lot of people swear by it. I think this is one of Casey Holmes, like her favorite concealers ever. So I don't know. We're going to give it a try. We're going to see. 
I gotta say, I really like the consistency. It's not thick at all. It's a very, very thin consistency. And typically I wouldn't like a wand that's this thin. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it's a very thin profile for a wand, um, especially for concealer. But the concealer liquid itself is so thin and viscous that it just applies like a dream. All right, now I'm just blending this out by itself at first, but I probably will go in, oh yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely have to go in and add some of my CoverGirl concealer. It is absolutely beautiful beautiful on my under eye. Holy cow. Um, I love the way that looks. Oh my gosh. I don't even think it properly like transmits to camera how nice that is, but I do have to go in because it's not quite bright enough because they're both very dark on me and I have to brighten everything up with a little bit of my CoverGirl concealer here and I'm just using a tiny amount just to see if I can make it a little bit brighter and make everything match my face just a little bit more because right now I'm looking a little bit crazy. All right guys, so I went ahead and I tried to get everything to match. It took me a hot minute, but I blended out the neck and I blended everything really well like into the forehead and just tried to get the planes of my face to match a little bit better and I'm hoping based on where we are right now I should be able to keep making it match as we go forward so so far everything is looking nice now I'm gonna go in with some powder this is one of my all-time favorite ones from the drugstore this is the Maybelline Fit Me loose finishing powder in 05 fair and I'm just gonna take that and stamp it under my eyes with the Marc Jacobs the conceal brush and I did want to go in with this powder today because I'm using the foundation and the concealer obviously I haven't used them so I wanted to make sure that I had a control very Variable, and this powder is fantastic. I've used it for years and I absolutely love it. All right, and now after that, again, another step I am used to doing. I know how my skin responds. I'm going to take the Pixi um, Flawless Finishing Powder here. This is in the shade number two translucent and my Morphe JH01, and I am going to lightly powder the rest of my face. All right, you guys, we're getting nervous. So I just pulled the bronzer out that I have for today and I'm thinking there's a reason that I haven't used it yet. And um, it's probably because, well, it's uh, it looks real dark. So this is from uh, Wet n Wild. This is their color icon bronzer in the shade You're Dragging Me Down. And um, does that look really dark to anybody else? <laughs> Like, as I'm looking at it, I'm kind of like getting a little bit nervous, a little bit apprehensive. Um, we're gonna try it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh dear Jesus, I need your help more now than ever. Oh. Guys, <laughs> I just, I don't know what to do. I just went to bronze my face. The entire pan fell out onto the floor. <laughs> and like, I just opened it for the first time. It was completely sealed. Oh my god, like what? What even is my life? Oh, how times have turned, you guys. I just went and I checked over in my little area and I actually found another Wet n Wild bronzer. So <laughs> hold on to your little hats. But I found another Wet n Wild bronzer. It has not been opened, so it's still completely sealed on this side and on this side. And it is in the shade Sunset Strip Tease. And I guess we can try this one. Now, is this gonna fall out? No, okay, so it's safe to actually open it and try again, yay! All right, so here is the bronzer. I feel like this one actually kind of looks better than the other one. Ooh, it's a shiny ass bronzer. It's almost like a highlight. Oh God, it has a lot of shimmer to it. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna go in here. This is the Flawless Powder Brush number 202 from It Cosmetics. And I am going to take some of this bronzer on that brush and just start lightly bronzing up my skin. Because it has shimmer, I'm gonna be even lighter with it. I feel like the shimmer is causing a little bit of an issue though, because it's making me look really like highlighted all over the skin in more of an unflattering way. It's almost making the bronzer look a little bit patchy. And it's weird, cause like on this side right here, it doesn't look that bad. I feel like it looks nice, it looks smooth. But then when I turn my face, I feel like back here, it's a tiny bit patchy. All right guys, so for blush, we are going deep. And I mean deep into the realm of page, way back when I first started my channel, there was this brand, Note Cosmetics, here they are, this is what all of their packaging looked like, and it was released at Ulta maybe, like safely I would say a year and a half, two years ago, and I did, I did was it like a full face or something, I don't know, I did looks with all of their products multiple times, and overall the brand itself wasn't bad. Now I did look on Ulta and they are not on Ulta anymore, so my guess would be they weren't a great seller, and for whatever reason they're just not there, but I did see, I think they still have 
have their own website, so if we're really into this, you, I think, can still get it. But this is the Note Cosmetics Luminous Silk Compact Blusher in the shade 05 Desert Rose, and they were definitely drugstore. They were more so on the... <sighs> the trash is still right here. <laughs> like, why do I always throw it on the ground? Mm. But if memory serves, their products were still on the affordable side. I want to say it was like maybe right in the six, seven-ish dollar range. And the color itself is absolutely beautiful. And look at the richness of that pigment. It is so, so beautiful. I do remember with a lot of their face products, you had to use a very light hand. Ooh, guys, that is so freaking pretty. <gasps> I like that color a lot. This is the Morphe JH04 brush. I actually prefer to over apply my blush a little bit. And I like to buff my blush and my bronzer in together into my skin. So I'll go back in here with a little bit of my pixie powder, just a tiny amount, and I'll actually buff them together. I just feel like it makes it look a lot more like seamless. And I don't go in with a lot of powder at all. It's just enough to make sure that I'm not like gonna drag or skip on my skin. The only issue I am seeing is that I think I need to bake just for the subtle purpose of trying to correct some of the darkness on my skin. And I think to do that, I'm gonna need a nice bright powder. Is this, this is that Maybelline powder. i start off by doing a little bit of cut jaw work right through here. Um, just to help give me a little bit more shape in that region. All around the world, people crumble for me. Who knows how long I've loved you. I just want to fly. I'm a bird on a fly on so high, 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 high in the sky. All right, so while that sits there and bakes into the skin, I am going to go ahead and move on to my brows just off of camera real quickly. I have the Morphe Micro Brow Pencil. This is in the shade Latte. And then I have the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow Gel in the shade 110 Medium. And I'm just going to go ahead and get those out of the way. I didn't have anything new for brows. So I'm going to get those done and then we can keep going. All right, beautiful people. So brows are on. I went ahead and did the pencil and the gel together and when I went ahead and I wiped away all of my bake I used this little guy right here. I wanted to throw it in. This is the essence brighten up banana powder It's one of my favorite products from the drugstore um, Especially if I'm trying to like correct any brightness whether it's on my jawline my under eye anything like that I like to use this as well just as like an extra little bit of brightness and it's a really really awesome brightening powder So if you're in the market, it's only a couple of dollars and it's fantastic now moving on from there It is time to get into eyes and and for eyes, I had quite a few options. However, because I'm not like overly Christmassy, I didn't want to go like super bold and super intense. Not only has that not been my vibe lately, I just haven't been into really intense eyes, but I wanted to play around with some stuff that's a little bit more understated that I haven't had a chance to. So to start off, I have this guy right here. This is the matte bar from Maybelline. I picked this up forever ago, like when it launched, as well as these little guys. Now these are from BH and these are their Diamond Dazzlers and it says they are a loose foil pigment. I have three different shades here and I know I'm going for more of a neutral look, but I thought we could kind of pick one of these, maybe zhuzh up the eyes a little bit, give them some sparkle because this whole palette is obviously matte. So I don't know, we're just gonna play around, do like a nice light kind of eye look and add a little shimmery sparkly cuteness. And now that I think about it guys, I probably should have done this first because these are actually um, loose highlight pigment sprinkly sparkle things so oops but that's okay all right it's fine it'll be fine I want to go into this shade right here though it's this really nice long orange shade it's really pretty it's a very soft shade but like the pigmentation is gorgeous so I'm gonna go in with that shade and a Morphe Y16 and I'm going to start that one primarily on the outer V and then lightly pull it through the inner portion of the eye I don't want it to be too dark but I want it to be present like I want to be able to blend it out and still work with it so I got that good and blended in and I really enjoyed building up that shadow I think truth be told I built it up a little bit more than I originally intended to but I I'm really happy with how it worked and I think like look at the gradient for me not having to go in and blend that out with another color I think that actually looks pretty nice so now we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a deeper brown I'm gonna grab this one right here this dark brown shade and same brush um, and I'm just very lightly going to grab it tap off most of the excess and I'm going to work with uh, this color and just buff it into this outer V and use it to pull the eye up a little bit more and really buff it into this corner up here so I can create like some good um, elongation and lift in the eye. 
because my eyes, they're not so much downturned, but they are very small and squatty. So anything that I can do to add a little bit more depth into this area of the eye just helps make them look a little bit bigger and more cat eye-esque as opposed to more downturned or more um, on the small side. Now I'm gonna go in with, again, the same brush here and I'm gonna grab this really light bone colored shade right here and I'm gonna use that up in the brow bone area to blend everything together but also give me a little natural lift in this area. I don't necessarily need it for blending purposes, like I mentioned before, they blend really nicely, but I do want to lift and gradiate this area as much as possible. I'm just going in real quickly here with a Wet n Wild pencil brush and I'm adding some of the orange under the eye and then I'll go in with a little brown and give it a little flick in the upward direction. As far as the shadows go on like a consistency and are they good basis, I don't think that they're bad shadows necessarily. They have blended really well. The only problem is that they are incredibly powdery when you're working with them. Like taking a brush and dipping in just puts powder everywhere. Very, very light, fluffy, soft shadow. So something to keep in mind. Other than that, I'm just going to give you a close up right now. I don't like the layout of this pan. I hate all of this wasted packaging and wasted size like all of these gigantic you know three quarters of an inch or half inch here quarter inch here like there's just so much wasted space and I don't like that I also don't like that some of the colors I would use the most like this lighter brow shade down here and this one up here like I would use those a lot and they're the smallest in the pan whereas ones like this larger cool tone shade right here I won't get as much use out of but as far as the palette overall like, like I said it's not awful I was able to create a really beautiful base look with this and I think for an everyday drugstore option, it's not bad. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad. All right, so now we're moving on to the shiny stuff. Let's go ahead and tap out a little. Oh yeah, girl, she is very loose. And let's see, oh, if you squish it down, it'll actually turn into kind of a paste. Okay, oh, that's, oh my God. That is beautiful, what is this? This is the shade Radiant. Oh, this is so pretty. Okay, let's look at the other shades. Oh my gosh. You are so beautiful to me. Oh, can't you, oh, can't you see? Look at that pink shade. It's called brilliant. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I'm not. Who are we kidding? It's just who I am. Oh my gosh, these are gorgeous. This is in the shade Flashy. <gasps> oh my word. Like, are you properly seeing these? These are gorgeous. Now, even though they do turn into a paste of their own, you know, when you start to work them out, I'm still going to grab some of my NYX glitter glue here, and I'm going to put that all over my lid just with my finger. And I'm really gonna tap and press that in. And then I'm just going in with my finger into some of that shade. And I am going, oh wow, Fallout City, sweetheart. I just got it all over my face. Oh, <gasps> ooh, girl, that's pretty. Definitely should have thought about this one and probably done this step first. Oh, that's, that is absolutely um, stunning. Okay, like don't, please don't bother me again with your um, inquiries. I'm out for the rest of the day. And then I'm just taking with my finger over here and I'm kind of blending it out over that dark brown on the side. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> okay, so um, if you do this after you do foundation, you're gonna end up with some of it embedded into your under eye, love that. And while we're at it, seems how it's already a mess, like down here, um, I'm just taking some extra on my finger and mashing it under my tear duct. Because if we already have loose glitter down there, like, we might as well just go for it. You know what I mean? Like, why not? It's just makeup. It's fine. You know what I just remembered? I'm pretty sure I bought the base that goes with this that you're supposed to use. Like, BH Cosmetics came out with some sort of a gel base, I think, to use with these. And I'm pretty sure I left that in my drawer, but I took these out. So there might have actually been something to use with these. And I was like, no, it'll be fine. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is so, I'm like, guys, I'm actually stunned at how beautiful that looks. Like who even is this sparkly princess? I never do dark eyes anymore. 
and I just, I'm, wow, wow. All right, so I went ahead and I turned on that overhead light I was talking about, I zoomed the camera out, and we are officially going to start um, wrapping up the rest of the face. So I didn't have a new setting spray. However, I pulled out of my collection this one that I haven't used in quite some time. It is the Wet n Wild Cucumber 3-in-1 Primer Water. These are really, really nice, super refreshing. And before I go in ever with my highlight, I like to go in and really spray and like set down the face. Mm. And then while that goes in and starts to press all my layers together, I want to go in with a highlight. This is the Pixie by Petra Glowy Gossamer Duo. And it has two different shades on it. Ooh, girl, they look real pretty. They feel fantastic. Oh, oh my God. Literally, they look like metal. Like, do you see? <gasps> Guys, I love highlights so much. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight using the new Wayne Goss Holiday Edition brush. I did talk about this in an anti-haul, which I will link right up here for you guys. And I told you I purchased it, I did. I've used it a ton. It is so freaking beautiful. So I'm gonna dive into the lighter side right up here because I definitely think that one will work for my skin tone. Okay, so this is interesting. I'm applying it with this brush, which I've used several times and I've never had an issue, but I'm not getting nearly as much payoff on this as I normally would. And I'm wondering if it's because this is more of a like kind of gummy type consistency. Um, so I'm actually gonna grab instead, I'm gonna go in with my sponge here. And I'm gonna press it in, oh, there it is. Okay, so with this type of a highlight on my textured skin, it definitely works better to go in with a sponge. And it's just the texture of the highlight that does it. Um, the, I've talked about this before when it comes to like the Physicians Formula, those have more of a gummy texture. The Stila Heavens Hue, anything with like that gooey consistency, I do have to apply a little bit differently because I have a lot of raised texture on my face. And for some reason, applying this type or this consistency of a highlight, um, with a brush just doesn't work. So now I think what my skin needs more than anything is a really nice hydrating setting spray. And for that, I'm gonna go in with my cult classic, my favorite, the Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some mascara. This is the Ardell Double Up Volumizing Mascara. It's a little bit frustrating, not gonna lie. Like I just sat here and have been trying to work with this one section for the last minute and I can't get any length, volume, or definition. So I'm just gonna skip that one and go into the second cap and maybe having less product on it will work better. Yeah, absolutely not. It looks like I actually have less eyelash than when I started. Nope. All right guys, so I'm just gonna tell you right now, full disclosure, I got real violent there for a second. That mascara just about wrecked my world. It made my lashes so gummy and nasty. Like I had to go in with my fingers and like by hand peel off. It was, ugh. It was not enjoyable. It took me multiple mascaras to try and fix it. It still doesn't look that great, but we're just gonna move into lips and like whew, call it a day and be happy again. So for lips, I'm gonna start off with this little lip liner. This is the Koki Cosmetics Retractable Lip Liner. It's in the shade Nude, and it says it is rich, matte, smudge proof, long wear, waterproof, and made in Germany. Okay, so lip liner on. I don't hate the color. I did go ahead and swatch it right here because I know that with my like skin tone being a little off because of the foundation, it's hard to tell. So if you're used to seeing just a swatch, this is what it looks like. Um, it has a really nice consistency. You can definitely tell that it is on the matte side. My only critique is that the shade name is Nude and that just drives me crazy on like a personal level because nothing in cosmetics should have the shade name Nude because everyone's Nude is different, but that's just my opinion. Moving on to lipstick, I have something from ColourPop. This is their Lux lipstick in the shade What's Your Sign and it's actually part of the Zodiac collection that they did with Lil Miss Kathleen Lights. And it's one of their just standard packaging standard formula. It's a cream lipstick, so it should have a nice slip consistency. And I thought the color, the neutrality of it would be really beautiful with just an overall nice brown look. All right, so she is on, applied. I did go ahead and swatch it right there. It has a slightly different undertone than the lip liner, so I had to go in with my finger and kind of meld the two together, but I'm not mad at it. Consistency is really nice. I'm a big fan already of ColourPop lipsticks. Um, lipsticks, lip liners, any of that. I do prefer their cream formula to their matte formula, but that's just me in general. And then I thought just to top it off, we would go in with some of this. This is from Revolution, Makeup Revolution, and it is a gloss, or I'm sorry, it's actually a lip topper in the shade Luxury and it just looked so freaking beautiful, I had to use it. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't like this. Let me go ahead and swatch it for you. 
it is right there it has a beautiful amount of reflection if you just are swatching it plain but on the lips it settles immediately in and like almost soaks into your lipstick and it feels like a freaking like lotion oh my god I don't like this at all I'm actually gonna reapply everything just so I can take this off because this is awful I oh my the consistency is horrible. And all right, beautiful people, this is the finished look. What do you guys think? Be sure to give me all of your thoughts and opinions down below. I did go back through and take off all of the lip products. I reapplied both the liner and the lipstick, but for the gloss, instead I went in with just a little bit of the ColourPop So Juicy gloss in the shade Princess Cut, which is just their clear gloss, just to give it a little something. I still wanted that look. I like the glimmer of a gloss, but I wanted something that was actually nice and comfortable and looked good. But overall, I really really like a lot of the products I played with. There were definitely some duds. The mascara and that gloss topper thing, absolutely not. I will never touch those again. The bronzer I think I'll definitely have to work with. I think if I could put it over top of maybe like a cream contour so I didn't use as much of it, it might be better that way. The blush I like, the foundation I'm actually really enjoying. But overall, like I said, leave me all of your thoughts and opinions down below. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram and on Twitter. They will both be linked down in the description. But above all, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications to this here YouTube channel. I do upload three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it's just a fun time. We hang out, we get together, we do our makeup, we talk about makeup we love, makeup we don't love, we do plus size clothing haul try-ons, we do vlogs, we do all kinds of lifestyle -y stuff around here. So if you're into that, you like good old Northern Michigan content coming your way, again, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and you guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please do not forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So here's the thing. <laughs> If this little swatch of light wasn't on my forehead, like, look at how bright this is. Oh, God, what about that? Is that any better? Literally not at all. Cool, okay. Now, now we're gonna go ahead and just set the areas of my face that desperately need it. Okay, what? All right, now while that's baking into the skin and hopefully going to do some lighting. Okay. All right, so while that sits there and does its thing on my face, <laughs> reword that.